presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks. How you doing out there today? This is Daryl Martin, your host here for the Diagnostic Trading Hour here on TFNN. Don't forget you can listen to us anywhere on your mobile phone at tfn.mobi. Well, we got uh, Fed funds coming out today, and so we might try to see if we can find some trades that might line up. And uh, we'll dive into these here in just a second. Right now, we got the s and is down a few points. We have the NASDAQ up a couple points. We have the Russell down 10 with the Dow down 8. Gold's currently up about 9 points on the day with silver up over 2% on the day. Copper right now is up over 1, almost 1.5% 1 on the day. We got oil down 1%, down 99 cents at this moment. We got uh, natural gas is currently up about half a percent. Corn also up, uh, actually they're down now. Uh, Dollar seventy-five there. It's not a big move there in corn. We got uh, soybeans up six point seven five. Euro dollar up twenty-one. Pound dollar up twenty-four. Aussie dollar at thirteen. Euro yen up twenty-three. US yen is flat on the day. Pound yen is currently up thirty-eight pips. Dollar cad is down six with dollar franc down twenty-seven. So what can we do uh, with the Fed funds rate? Well, there's a lot of ways to trade it. Um, it's obviously a pretty crazy volatile number usually. But one of the things that we can look at um, as trades before and after using Nadex. Now, if you don't have a Nadex account, simply hop on over to tfnn.com and on the right side, click on the Nadex banner. And then from there, you can get a demo trading account under trading, demo trading account. And to get a live account, just click on create account and go from start to fund it in about five minutes. There's only a $100 minimum uh, funding requirement. Of course, many traders fund more than that, but that's the minimum amount. People always want to know what that is. And uh, you can get going. As well, if you want to get access to some great education or deviation levels, scanners, check that out over on TFNN as well. So now that we got that down, let's go ahead and dive into some of the potential trades. Well, if I hop on over here and I check out the binary scanner to see what is possible. So right here, we're going to look at, say, 65 to 95. And we're going to look for some butterflies, which means range-bound trading, which sounds a little nuts except for, you know, going into 2 o'clock before the Fed funds, usually markets are pretty flat. They've been flat a good chunk of the morning already, but uh, they're usually really flat during this time. So we want ones that are going to expire here within the next hour, the only markets we're interested in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check out Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, dollar franc, and dollar CAD. So one of the nice things about the scanner here is you can look at multiple markets without doing a whole lot of clicking. So actually all of it on one page. Now that we have that piece put together, we'll scroll on down here and we can see what's available. And sometimes, I mean, we find great stuff. I know like a couple of uh, the Fed funds rate. I mean, I've taken every currency pair. Uh, the last one, there really wasn't any implied volatility. I wasn't able to grab anything. So just you got to look at it and just see what's there. If the trade's there, great. If not, then you don't force the trade. So that's the, one of the biggest pieces of advice, of course, I can give you as a trader. Just don't force the trade because you want to do the trade. Look at the numbers. Look at the stats. See if it adds up. If it does, awesome. If not, you know, there's always another trade. So um, checking out the Fed funds rate. Right now we're about an hour out from it. And we can go in and we can look at uh, some of the markets. Let's see. we got Aussie dollar. Um, everything right now is looking like it's uh, just a little bit on the tight side. We got Aussie dollar only 10 pips wide for its potential uh, butterfly, and usually the range is 20 pips. And then uh, Euro dollar 30 pips. We got 20 pips wide on a butterfly on there. We go on down, looking at the same thing on the pound dollar. Uh, we're getting uh, let's see here about 20 pips on that one. We get about that's actually the most volatile. And dollar yen, dollar yen 25 pips. Let's see what do we got. I mean, you could do this one right here. It'd be a really small butterfly, very small profit. I probably wouldn't want to hop in on that. It's just not worth the risk. And right now, there's just not one available on dollar franc or dollar cad. Get be able to get a position on both sides. All right, so we still have the 30-minute one coming up. But also, there's another tip 
to check out. Let's say like we're looking at this euro dollar, 3754 to 3774, okay? And we can go over here and uh, we'll, you know, look at this chart in here, 3754 to 3774. And sometimes you just look at the range and just go, you know what, does this even, you know, does it make sense? 3754, 3774. You know, we're staying in that range really, really well right now. So check that out right there. I mean, we've been there since 10 o'clock. So understanding that, you may go ahead and tighten that up. Also, you could look at the high to the low and go where are we at. The high um, for the, like the 90-minute time frame, usually the uh, biggest range we get on the euro dollar is 35 pips. So, you know, we're not even really getting that right now. It's, it's just really, really flat. So since we are able to get right in the middle and since those ranges actually do look acceptable, then that would be the first trade we could check out. Ideally, we want 30 pips, okay? But, again, you just got, you got to look at the chart and go, does it make sense? And right now, I mean, that does make sense. So we've literally been seeing the entire market oscillate just, like, stuck in that range for the last few hours. So the way that you would do that is you'd go in, and now you can leg into this, or you can hop in just on one side. There's different ways to do it, okay? So, but you could leg into the trade and let some of the oscillation potentially fill you if you wanted to. And I'll show you how to, you know, leg into a trade. All that means is that you uh, take the risk of not getting filled on one side or the other, okay? So, um, for instance, if you went in and did this trade right now, you'd be looking at about a $30 profit on the trade. You could go in optionally and choose to put in a lower price. Um, so you could say, I don't want to buy unless it gets down to 85. But if the market doesn't, you know, if the euro dollar doesn't pull down, you know, five or ten ticks uh, between now and one, then you're not going to be able to get that fill, and then you need to get fill on the other side. That doesn't help hedge you on the opposite side. So that's, uh, you know, definitely a personal choice. Sometimes people will just choose one side of the leg um, simply because they don't like the, uh, the range that's being given. So, anyways, um, if we go in, we grab the trade just to show you, you know, I want to show you at least an example of how this works. And if we go in, we just put one in there. We go here, put one in on this side, okay? Then uh, basically what we're saying on this trade is that as the market, you know, is fluctuating, you got to, you know, grab it because these things will move around quite a bit. But as it's fluctuating, we're looking to make about $30 on this trade if the market stays within the range, okay? Now, as it oscillates down, you could go in and, you know, maybe get a better trade. Like right now, you could get about a $10 profit on the long side just because it dropped a couple ticks. So, again, the way that you would um, leg in would be to put in like a buy price say, of 85 and then a sell price of 15. That still give you about the same amount of income as we had before, the $30. Remember, if we got in and we sold it for 20 and you know, bought the other one for, you know, about 10 there. We got about a $30 profit. So you'd still get about the same amount of income. There wouldn't be a massive difference in that. The one difference would be that you sort of balance it out on both sides, making it easier to take a profit, okay? Um, right now you can get 13 on one side, 89 on the other, which means about a $24, $25 profit at the moment. And, again, all of this means is that the euro dollar between now and 2 o'clock, okay, between now and 2 stays within this range. That's it. So pretty simple. Uh, not really a you know, hard concept to get. So if you buy the 37.54, then what you're saying is it'll stay above 37.54 by expiration. If you sell the 37.74, you're saying it'll stay below 37.74 at expiration. Okay. So, again, by doing that, that basically helps you out um, to simply do a range-bound trade. And the expiration is going to be at 2 o'clock, so right before Fed funds comes out. So this is binary butterfly before the news where we expect the market to be range-bound during this time. Now, we can also look at some of the other markets. You know, check out Aussie dollar. It's been a lot more, you know, I wouldn't say a lot more volatile, I guess. It's only about 15 pips high to low there. But if you go over and you look at, you know, what's available on the Aussie and is it a trade that you'd be comfortable with, you only got, you got about 10 pip there, but it's been moving up and down about 15 pips. So probably don't want to hop in on that Aussie one. Um, almost uh, 15 pips low to high, 84 to 98. So uh, not quite 15, but still more than I probably like. And, again, it's, it's jumping around quite a bit. 
um, compared to the euro dollar has been so far been pretty flat. If we look on over at the Aussie dollar, uh, what we can see we got that, and we'll uh, jump into the pound dollar. Um, let's see here, move the chart on over, catch it up, and we had a range right here of 60.58 to 60.78. Yeah, see, we're getting like 20 pip ranges right now going on in pound dollar, and that's usually the most volatile out of them previous to the announcement. And you can get about a 20 pip range, a 55 to 77. So not one that I'd be real comfortable in hopping in on just looking at the volatility this morning. Um, we'll go ahead we'll look at the dollar yen. On the dollar yen, um, let's see here what we got is we got to move up and down. Let's see our low to high besides the, you know, the early morning there. We got 98.13 to 98.28, about a 15 pip range um, since that time. So if we go in here and go, what do we have? Uh, you have a about a 15 pip wide, uh, one 98.14 to 98.29. So with that, I'd go in and go, okay, what do I like 98.14 to 98.29? We go in and look at right here. That's sort of right at the low of where the market was. If we go in, we draw that line on there, okay? Right at the low, 98.14, up to 98.29. So right there is our range. That's, I mean, that's possible. It's still pretty close. You're only talking about a five pip down move. And uh, you'd have to again look at your risk reward on the trade. Uh, you're looking at only, let's see, what about 19 on one side and 750 on the other. So that's not horrible. It's not a horrible trade. It's not perfectly in the center yet. I probably would rather. Go in and get the trade for like 15 or, you know, 1250 or whatever on both sides there. Um, let's hop into it right now. Like, let it get up a little bit closer to 98.22 or so before I hopped in on that one. But that's definitely a possible trade. And uh, let's see here. We go and let's check out a couple other currency pairs. And this is going into the Fed funds. So uh, we got dollar CAD. Uh, looks like it's been up to 470, down to 455. Yeah, see, pretty, pretty wide range there. Not want to hop in. I'm not going to want to hop in on that one. Um, and we can also look and see if there's anything even available. Let's see, dollar cad. There is one available right now, but it's only 10 ticks wide, and we're already breaking out of that range in the early morning hours here, up to the announcement. So since it's breaking that range, I'm going to avoid the dollar cad. And uh, let's see here. So it's not, you know, stats is one piece, but remember, diagnostic trading is the fundamentals, the seasonals, the stats, and the technicals. So you got to look at the technical piece, too. You can't just go pure stats. And uh, we'll look at Dollar Frank when we get back from this commercial break. Stay right there. says you can't take it with you. TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl, take your phone calls <laughs> now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And so uh, just looking at some of the different markets right now, we're going through and we're talking about the butterflies on the Forex pairs. And... Uh, so you can check those out. Where, like I said, we're walking through them one step at a time, trying to get them all knocked out here. And uh, what I'm looking at is the dollar cad, and like I said, it's a little bit too wide for our range that we like to go for. Okay, so we may want a little bit uh, wider one than that. And so right now, the one we found so far is the euro dollar. And if I hop on over and look at the last one we got on the list is the dollar franc, which is trading in a pretty nice range. Um, Looking at since about 10 a.m., we got 89.60 up to about 89.76. So giving us about a 16 tick wide range. We can go over. We can look and see if there's anything that looks good. It's we're only getting about 10 ticks, 72 to 62. So I'm going to look at that range over here. And right here, yeah, see, not really, uh, not really good on that price levels, right? Because it recently hit that. So. Oh, uh, we're getting really tight in there. So now what I want to do is we just went over the hour stats. Let's go with, uh, narrow it down now. We're getting closer to the 30-minute mark and see what our 30-minute ranges are to see if there might be a trade coming up that we can use with the 30-minute ranges. All right, so on the 30-minute ranges um, for the FX pairs leading into it, we're getting uh, 16 ticks. Uh, let's see, we're on dollar franc right now. We'll get that 20 ticks, actually, is the average range on dollar franc in the last 30 minutes. And uh, if we go on over, we can look at 
let's see, dollar CAD. And dollar CAD, they have the average range we're getting is 15. So that would put us, uh, let's see here if that's even a possibility. So, nope, nothing showing up on dollar CAD. So it's basically out. Dollar franc, uh, we're still only getting 10 ticks. Dollar franc, we usually have a 20 tick range. Our tightest ranges are usually Aussie dollar and dollar yen. So we'll go to uh, dollar yen and we'll go to Aussie dollar. We'll check out Aussie dollar first real quick and look at this one on here. And then we'll go into the, there we go. Okay, so Aussie dollar, nothing showing up on that one at the moment. And dollar yen, dollar yen. Okay, so we may have a potential trade here. Again, dollar yen, the average range is 16 ticks. And uh, you can get about $20 on, let's see, what would that be? It'd be about 16 um, ticks there. Um, a range on the current butterfly. So we got to do is we got to look at the actual range. But 98.24 minus 98.09 is what we'd be looking at. And so that gives us about 50, well, basically does give us 15 ticks on that trade. So let me pull up the dollar yen chart. Go we'll look at it and uh, see if we like those strikes at this moment. And uh, now it's 98.24 to 9814. So they're moving pretty fast. So I don't know if we'll be able to get it, but it moves us down to about here. Leave it right here. So stay like right in this range. And you're basically expecting this to happen over the next 30 minutes. Doing that trade would bring you in a decent risk reward of, let's see, uh, 17 plus 20. You're looking at about $37 on the trade. Again, it has to stay in that range all the way through to expiration. So uh, if we bought this one over here and sold this one, that's again, that's buying the 98.14, selling the 98.24. Okay? So it gives us a pretty tight range, but it stayed pretty range bound. It's also one of the least volatile pairs out of the group. Um, so just so you can see those again, 98, uh, 24 and 98, 14. So really keeping it tight within that range. And uh, if it does stay in there, then as long as it expires um, at two o'clock in that range, then we will be profitable on the trade. Okay, so that is, that's really how the butterflies work. I'm going to go through. I'm going to look at the ranges, the average ranges like I went over with you today. And um, I, I read them off usually on days before we go through all the details on them. But, um, for instance, the Aussie dollar, you know, high to low, usually is about 13 pips. Euro dollar is about 20. Pound dollar is 20. Dollar cat is 15 pips. Dollar franc is 20. Dollar yen is 15 to 16 pips. High to low average, um, you know, obviously some being higher. So some being lower, last time we had some pretty big movement um, leading into the ranges. It was uh, pretty interesting just how they worked out, where they came in and, um, you know, made their move. But we had uh, quite a few um, pairs move early last time. And then there was all this stuff about stuff leaking out into the media because there's, you know, there's reporters in there with cell phones and they're not supposed to make any cell phone calls. But does that stop text messages or hand signals or, you know, whatever it is? And some of that information, you know, if it leaks out, the markets can start moving early. And that's really what happened last time. We saw the markets move a lot earlier than normal um, across the board. All right. Uh, stay there. We'll be right back after this break, and we'll look at um, not only these, but the straddles and strangles and how they work. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Wednesday, October 30th at 6.30 p.m., Andy Hecht has a special live online workshop for his subscribers to his weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, called A Roadmap That All Investors Should Use But Most Don't. During this hour-long live webinar, Andy will teach you how to use free and readily available market data to calculate the future expected price range for any asset. It's a simple yet powerful method that every investor should have in their toolbox. The best part is that you can attend this live online workshop, which will be archived, by simply signing up for a 30-day free trial to Andy's newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. And this is the last month to lock in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. This price will be going up by over 25% come November, so now is the perfect time to get in on the action. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So, uh, again, we got the Euro-Dollar trade right here, 37, uh, 55, 37, 75, staying between that range between now and 2 o'clock. So that's the first butterfly. We also put on a butterfly on the dollar-yen. So right here, uh, a little bit tighter, a little higher payout, but a little bit tighter, uh, 98.14 to 98.24. So uh, a couple examples right there. Now, on the binary butterflies, depending upon your payout, depending upon your uh, risk, I guess, appetite, you can exit. Uh, if it hits the upper or lower range, um, or you can hold it to expiration and see if it comes back in. It just depends upon, uh, again, how much did you receive on the trade, how much are you risking on the trade, and, again, what's your risk-reward appetite. The closer I get to one-to-one, -to -one, the less likely I am to exit this right away when it hits the strike. So, and right now, it's like uh, all those are doing pretty well. Um, looking on over and seeing what are the other potential trades that we have, then... We can go and look at, uh, well, this morning we had a trade that came out. Let's go ahead and talk about that one real quick, and then we're going to hop in and look at the potential to straddle or strangle the upcoming news release. Uh, we had the uh, USD core CPI. The euro dollar was really the uh, biggest one for breaking out. The dollar yen had more of a possibility on a butterfly. So uh, let's see uh, what kind of movement we did have on that. The average move, though, was about 45 pips on the dollar yen. So that was pretty hard to uh, capture that. But 8.30, uh, butterfly into the news, if you would have got in, you know, like right around 8 o'clock. Well, the high was 98.26. The low was 98.08. So 
So if you could have got a butterfly for you know, about 20 pips wide, then uh, that would have been a profitable trade for you. However, if you were over on the euro dollar earlier this morning um, and you were doing the trade, it uh, didn't really have much of a massive announcement come out. So if you got in, let's say somewhere around 8.15 or so, 37.65, it popped up, then flew on down to 37.43. Uh, so it didn't really move down that far at all. Would have given you a chance to get out of the trade at break even when you saw that there was not really a big divergence on the news. Again, we had an expectation that the news was going to come out at a point two, we were looking for a point zero or point four, and um, on the news, and we ended up getting a point one. So we really did not hit the uh, deviation. We like to see that deviation being hit on the expected news announcement for the trade to uh, really make a big move. We didn't see that. It sort of came down. First hint, it popped up, came back down. Like I said, did a couple chances there, but um, especially with the bounce on settlement. If you're looking at that, it's really helpful to know the settlement lines. Uh, we'll look at that as well for you. Let me pull that chart on here. And we'll go over here and check it out. So on a uh, euro dollar, then right there at settlement. So 37.44, notice how it came right down to settlement, bounced off of that. And again, you had plenty of time. You had over you know half an hour to see that the news did not come in as expected. It was moving really slow. We didn't get any kind of massive spike. And uh, so right at this point would have been right where you could got out of the trade just at break even. All right. Well, what do we have coming up? We're going to have the federal funds rate and the FOMC statement coming up at 2 o'clock, which does leave for potential, okay, um, again, potential trades here for uh, straddling or strangling the news. And we have a lot of pairs to do that. So let's go through and let's look at them and see what's out there for potential straddles and strangles over here on the euro dollar for after the news report comes out. And so to look at the straddles, I'm going to pull up the spread scanner. And I usually will put a $100 risk, one-to-one -one risk reward, and then I'll select in a, any of the currency pairs I'm potentially going to look at. And that allows me just to scroll up and down real quick and just sort of see you know, what I think is possible and, you know, probable. Uh, so we go down here, we'll look at, say, the uh, euro dollar. And which uh, one of the reasons I like looking at the euro dollar on this trade is if we do get the expected move, um, it usually does move quite a bit. So 95% of the time it moves 50 pips. So that's pretty nice if, uh, you know, if we can get a good trade on for less than that. Uh, and we do have to remember that the report comes out at 2 o'clock. So the 2 o'clock expirations are not going to do you any good. <laughs> okay, so you want to be looking at the 3 o'clock expirations. And so let's look at the uh, 3 o'clock. So we can even get rid of the 2 o'clock by just saying that we want there to be at least, you know, say 60 minutes till expiration. And that'll drop those right off the list for us. And now all we can see are the 3 o'clock. So we see the ones that started at 1 and go to 3. And we see the ones that started at uh, 7 a.m and go to three to see if we can find one. Um, we do have some within the max risk, so uh, we are going to have to get some pretty good movement for these to pan out, but uh, because they're just right at it. So, I mean, you're talking pure premium here. And uh, so there's not a big difference in them, so we've got to figure out what's really going to be the closest to where the market is right now. The market's currently trading at right at 37.67. So around there. So 37.70 is a little bit closer. All right. Now, the one issue, what's the issue with this trade compared to the other one? Well, look at how the profit's really capped out at 75 bucks. Okay. Well, that's not horrible because I plan on taking profit at basically that price. That's the issue, right? Because if I want to take my total risk plus the risk on the other side um, or my total risk uh, and just add that on if I want to do a more conservative one, but uh, I'm really looking. I'm really limiting my profit if the thing does just take off. So I may choose to go in and go. You know what? This one comes out to about the same risk. It has a little bit of an edge to one side. Has about the same risk. But uh, my risk comes out to let's see here. What is that? Forty-two bucks or so. Forty-three bucks on the trade, which, like I said, just above our max risk at forty-nine dollars. So that is one trade you can look at. Pretty expensive one. Okay. And um, oh, I need to make sure I have live checked up here. There we go. Now we can also go and look at some of the other markets. 
There we go. So looking at the the wider, the 3760 to 4010, and also looking at the wider, uh, 3 o'clock, 3510 to 3760. Okay. So again, that's a little bit on the higher end of the price range uh, for what we're expecting. There's a lot of premium built in. So uh, now let's look at, let's see. Now, by the way, this is also where I've seen traders will go in and we do what's called an iron condor, okay, um, where they'll invert it. And it sounds sort of weird, but what you actually do is you go in and you sell the one you normally buy and buy the one you normally sell. And that would bring you in about 50 bucks in premium with a $75 risk on either side, either side making 25 bucks. It basically would give you a one-to-one -one iron condor. Um, so if you wanted to try something out like that, you know, demo it, whatever, then the way that you do that, let me line these back up for you because I want you to see how this would work, okay? Right here, you're doing the opposite, okay? So just to show you an example of an iron condor, sort of a good uh, learning lesson here. When you see if you go premium is too high, then do the opposite of that. All right, so if we look at you know the market right there, these are about 20, 10 to 20 to 30 pips, uh, 20 to 30 pips off of where the market is. And you wouldn't want to do the wider ones because you have more risk, but you could do the narrower ones. Okay? So we'd go in and instead of doing the wider ones, we'd go and use the narrow ones. Why? Because they have capped risk and go the opposite direction. So I'm going to open the buys and the sells. And another way to see this, let me show you this is sort of a cool trick, is we'll remove the filters right here. We're going to go back down to the euro dollar. And I want you to notice the inverted break even distance. Okay? Notice this right here. We can see the break even distance being, you know, off or inverted from the other one. And right there. See how it's negative 17 and positive 22? Okay? So that's the inverted break-even distance. You usually you see it has, the market has to move up for you to be profitable. Well, in this case, it actually says as long as the market stays flat, you'll be profitable on the trade. Uh, this one says the market would actually have to move, instead of having to move down to be profitable, it says, hey, it could actually move up against you 22 pips on a sell, and you'd be profitable on the trade. Now, we're talking at expiration. Okay? So... That inverted break-even distance again. So usually the market would have to move in the direction that you're going to pay for the premium. This is premium collection. So if I bought that one and sold that one, these are the shorter ones right here. Okay. If I bought here and I sold here are the trades that we're looking at for you know understanding how the iron condor would work. And this would be again, this would be pretty you know pretty hefty move because you're really expecting the market to move. But if you thought the premium was just way too expensive, okay, then this is a way that you could go in and take advantage of that expensive premium. Because look at where the market is, 37.65, 37.46. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, if you're buying at 37.46 and the market's already at 37.46, 65, you're buying at $19 lower than where the market is. Okay? So that's pretty sweet. And over here, you're selling. We look at 37.89 and the market's at 37.65. You're buying, you're selling 24 pips higher than where the market is. So basically, you're bringing in $43 of premium on these trades, okay? And if you're bringing that premium in, and you go, well, what's the max risk? If I'm basically making or losing 20 bucks on either side, I have a max risk of 76. Well, I'm going to bring in $43, and this is sort of like doing a binary butterfly, okay? Um, basically, what you're saying is it'll finish lower than where you sell and higher than where you buy, the spread itself. So if I bought it at 37.46, I'm saying it'll finish higher than 37.46. And right here, I'm saying it'll finish lower than 37.89. If it doesn't, I don't lose. It's not an all or nothing like a binary butterfly. Okay, I'll, like a binary butterfly, if it expires outside either side, 
then you know you're gonna lose all on that one side, and of course you'll make everything on the other side. On this one, you'd make everything on the other side, but you'd only lose some unless it expired all the way up. Okay, all 75 ticks higher up. Uh, it'd have to literally go all the way. If I'm selling this, it'd have to expire above 38.70 for me to lose the entire 50 bucks. So there's actually a lower risk to iron condors if you can find them, and you usually only find them when there's a lot of premium built into the trade. So that's a that's definitely one to work on. It'll uh it'll challenge your mind a little bit. It's a little you know, like I said, it's a it's it's a different way of looking at things. Most people think of the butterflies when they think of doing premium collection. They don't think of how to um, go in and invert the spreads. And the only way this really works again is if you're using the shorter time frame, like the two hour contracts, and you again look for that negative break even distance because that negative break even distance is the clue for you uh, that it could work. So if you can get the smaller, the less wide binaries over here, or not binaries, but spreads, like 100 ticks wide, that lowers the risk and therefore gives you a close to one to one risk reward ratio trade with um, the ability to not have the total one to one. Like I said, on a binary butterfly, if it expires above the strike, that one strike will have max loss. On this, it's only it's every tick above where you bought it, every tick below where you sold it, um, or sorry, every tick above where you sold it, every tick below where you bought it, where you have a one tick loss on that, and uh, it's it's sort of counterintuitive, but it once you get used to it, it makes a lot of sense. They actually make out for some pretty sweet trades, and if you can get them on, um, if you, when you find them, like in rare instances like this, they actually make better sense than doing a butterfly when you can find them. So, because, like I said, your risk actually is lower because it's not going to be an all or nothing. When we are looking over here at the uh, butterflies on the euro dollar, a little bit earlier, we were saying that it had to finish above or below our chosen strike, right? So it had to finish above this strike and below this strike. If it finishes above this strike, the one we bought will lose completely. Like everything, if it has a $70 risk, it'll lose 70 bucks. all right? Um, whereas a spread, it, let's say if you sold the spread right here, it only lose one dollar for being a tick above, two dollars for being two ticks above, ten dollars for being ten ticks above. So it won't take on the full loss just because it expires above or below where you bought or sold the spread. Because the spread is the the risk is a variable payout, meaning it's based a, the different the P and L is based on the difference where you buy and sell something. That's it. So, anyways, that's a I'll challenge you with that one to go look at it. And uh, see how it works, but it's a it's a pretty cool trade, and the iron condors are not as easy to find because usually there's not enough premium to make them worth doing. But when you can find them, um, and when you think premium is too high, you can always go the opposite direction, and this is a way to go the opposite direction. Go okay, I'm going to collect that premium because I think it's just paying way too much. And um, let's see here, we can go down, we can check out the pound dollar. So on the pound dollar, we have an average move of about 70 pips on the trade. And um, see, 83% of the time, it breaks 50 pips. That's pretty good. So we'll uh, check out, see if we see anything on the pound that might be a good risk reward or not. We'll check it out when we get back from this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Basil Chapman has just announced that he will be hosting a one-day online master trader class. Friday, November 8th, Basil Chapman will teach you the essential fundamentals he uses when trading the market with his Chapman Wave methodology. Included in this full-day online master trader class is one month of Basil's daily newsletter service, The Opening Call, a $128 value, as well as a copy of his CD book, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, which usually sells for $249. Join Basil Chapman for this powerful one-day online master trader class Friday, November 8th, which will be archived if you can't attend live, where he'll give you a complete understanding of the Chapman Wave methodology and how to apply it to profitably trade any market in any time frame. For all the details and to reserve your spot while taking advantage of early bird pricing and saving $200 off the regular price, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So looking over at the... Of other potential trades, we got pound dollar. Now, one thing I will tell you on these is when we look at them, they're too expensive. I told you one solution is just to invert the thing. Now, it won't work as well on pound because notice how it's more volatile. It's 150 pip wide spread. So it's not as good for the inverted like the euro dollar has the 100 pip wide. So it makes it work a little better on that. You want to pay attention to that. You know, narrow ranges. You know, like you can go in Aussie dollar, you get 100 pip wide. So just make sure you're looking at that whenever you're trying to figure out, you know, potential plays like this. Uh, and if you can find them, then you know what? You got some great trades. Now, we can also look at some of the less volatile pairs when doing it. Okay, so this would be like where you might want to go in and go, uh, these are not near as volatile. So are they the ones that I might, if I can get a lot of premium? Because a lot of times that premium will be jacked up across the board. Okay? And so we may go down to, say, dollar CAD. And let's see what we can find on that. And uh, dollar CAD has the lowest, okay? Um, volatility out of them, you know, about 50 pips, and it only hits 50 50% 50 of the time. Okay, so that's that's actually really good. Uh, the average range title is like 52 pips. So if I'm looking at that, I can go, okay, well, are there some narrow ones? We have uh, some narrow ones here. Uh, which one of these lines up? Looks like that one lines up right there. And then go, okay, how much would I make? Uh, well, the most I could make on this trade is about 36 bucks. 
and therefore that would help lower my risk on the other side to about 50. And again, that's worst case if it moved 75 pips. Well, again, it only moves 50 pips 50% 50 of the time, and the average moves 50. So when it moves, it does move big, okay? But uh, often it doesn't move that far at all. So that might be uh, one of your best bets if you're looking at doing the inverted, okay, inversion of this. We're actually selling this one and buying this one right here. So, and you could look at it the way I'm looking at it right now, like a normal straddle, but going too expensive and just, you know, when you open the ticket, flip it. Or you could uh, get rid of the uh, filter on there and go on down here. And uh, then you can go down and choose, you know, just find the ones with the inverted break even. So like, there's a positive break even, there's a negative break even, like that. And so that would pop that up for you. And there you go. Now you can see, oh, that one's actually too big. So let's look at and see if we see another one. Yeah, we got this one right here. So that would be a couple of possibilities. There, I mean, there, and there's so many cool ways to tie these together. So uh, this one actually would be profitable if you combine this set together. You know, how would uh, we be profitable on that? So let's, but let's see, 10470, find a good match. So right now, it looks like uh, we're actually losing that inversion right now on the dollar CAD. So it's actually taking the premium out of it. They must be listening in. But uh, um, you can also go in, and you can do this on other things, too. You can look at the S&P and see, hey, is it too expensive to do a straddle on? And so if you're doing that, you just go on and, again, drop everything off. Look at it to see, is there anything like really massive break-even distance? Now, this is in ticks. So US 500 ticks, which are 0.1. And if you see anything, then you might have just a really, really good trade uh, that you can take advantage of. So it's pretty cool if you start putting all the pieces together, different ways to um, combine these for straddles and strangles and condors and everything else. All right, let's go over. Let's uh, look at, um, let's see right here. want to check out one other potential trade. Well, I look like that's all we got time for. All right, well, um, hope you all have a great day in the markets, and I will catch you tomorrow right here on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.